Well, hello and good morning. Uh, for those of you who don't know me too well, my name is Mitchell Young. I'm a research assistant here. And this is a presentation I put together titled The Research Experience and My Time at SSF, A Message to Garcia. Starting off with a little bit of my history at SSF, I'm currently here as a research assistant volunteering. I've almost been here for two years now as of this uh, summer. But what many of you probably don't know is my history with SSF goes far much further back than that. I was actually here in a small role in 2016 as a uh, shout out to our lab manager, Gary. And I'm happy to say I've just come on board as a lab assistant slash contractor. So uh, many of you will probably seeing, be seeing a lot more of me on the Saturday demos. This slide is oh, nice. just a little walk down memory lane that I put together. Uh, in the top left, that is 15 year old me with my very first cadaver. Uh, I remember being a little bit put off at first, but then just kind of excited at the opportunity I was being given. And then top middle and top right, that's also 15-year-old me observing my first uh, demo here at SSF. Now, these bottom two pictures are a little bit of a time lapse of Gary and I, our lab manager. In the left, that's uh, 2016 me and 2016 Gary, and then on the right, that's 2021 me and 2021 Gary. Uh, I think we both aged pretty well. <laughs> now, getting onto my research contribution here, uh, this is by no means a comprehensive list of every project that every German fellow here worked on, just more of a highlight of the projects that I had a little bit more involvement with. Uh, with Perry, uh, I started working on the YouTube paper with, with him, which was uh, looking at YouTube as a resource for the education of surgeons. And also on his uh, corpectomy data. And uh, moving on to Dr. Plumer, uh, Jonathan came with a heavy interest in spinal infections. So I helped him to put together the data that would go on to help his uh, site score paper and also his hardware placement and spinal infections paper, which was a paper that I found very interesting. And now with Garrett, I'm beginning to help him on his adjacent segment failure project. Just to touch on some notable firsts while I've, uh, that I've experienced while being here, I had my first editing slash submission experience with the YouTube paper. I believe we submitted this to Global Spine, if I remember correctly. I had my first experience interpreting medical imaging and data with uh, Perry's corpectomy data. And uh, I'm happy to say my very first published paper with Jonathan's site score, it's still a little bit surreal to see my name up there with so many great doctors. So I'm, I feel very privileged. For this slide, I have some interesting topics that I've encountered during my time here. Uh, one of those topics is just how many different indications there can be for spinal surgery. Uh, I've looked a, during my time here, I've looked a little bit at uh, trauma, tumor, and infection, mostly infection with Jonathan, but I would be very happy to, uh, at some point, put some time into those other two causes as well. And something that also interested me was the variety of surgical approaches to the spine that there are. Uh, if you would have asked me maybe five or six years ago, I would have assumed the only way that we're approaching the spine is by opening up the back and going very, very invasively. So I was pleased on getting here to see just how, how many developments have been made in minimally invasive surgery. Like, I believe this is an x lif shown on the right. Uh, which help us get patients in and out of the hospital quicker and hopefully with less pain. Another interesting topic was, this was uh, the topic of a paper by Zach, one of our old fellows, which looked at height change after a spinal surgery. I think this really caught my interest because it's exactly where my mind would go if I were to have a spinal surgery, just some more like sort of relevant to my life topics that would change after a spinal surgery. Now getting into the research experience itself a little bit, uh, I'd like to touch on just the general approachability first. I've 
uh, split this into both cadaver studies and data-driven studies such as meta-analysis. And I suppose on the cadaver studies, I found them to be surprisingly approachable, even for someone like me who's an undergrad. I would not say it's easy to jump in and just be the, the first researcher on a cadaver project, but to be a second and assist. This has been much more approachable than I would have initially thought. And sort of the same goes for data-driven studies, where the system we use here is EPIC to uh, sort through the records of our patients. And I found that once, uh, once I got a hold of how to navigate the software, it was much easier to draw data than I expected. Now, as for being an undergrad in medical research, I have not been to medical school yet, and this has posed uh, quite a few challenges that I've had to overcome. And I'll talk about these obstacles and what I've learned from them in the next few slides. Starting on obstacles, uh, the first one that I encountered was learning how to use our medical software, Epic. Uh, I would say this probably took about two weeks to become mostly well-versed in being able to find the data on Epic that I required for my projects. But as unfortunately Garrett knows, this was, this was only part of it where it may have taken me two to three months to get access to Epic before I, um, or when I started in 2021. Uh, another obstacle that I had to overcome was the differential uh, paper submission guidelines and formatting for different journals. Uh, upon arriving here, my naive idea was that uh, all journals would have a single format and, uh, sorry, would all have a single format and would be sort of inter interchangeably able to be submitted to one another. But upon working on the YouTube paper and submitting to Global Spine, I discovered this was not the case. Another obstacle that I overcame was uh, learning the surgical and medical terminology that we use here. I, through intense study and a little bit of Googling, I've been able to recognize a lot of terms that I'd never heard of, such as things like radiculopathy, or, uh, different procedures like XLIF, OLIF, ALIF. Uh, and finally, for this slide, uh, I've been also a full-time student for my entire time interning here and assisting here. So balancing my research responsibilities with my university uh, responsibilities has been a, a significant obstacle. But SSF has been very forgiving if something such as finals week comes around and I can't put as much time in that week to my research. Sort of. Continuing off the obstacles that I overcame, these are some new skills and knowledge that I acquired during my time here. Uh, I've acquired, I think, a much more enhanced knowledge of anatomy than when I began in 2021. I uh, only just took the anatomy class from my undergrad program in autumn, so there was a significant amount of learning that had to take place before that in, uh, in the lab and in research here. I can now say I'm a lot better versed in spinal anatomy and some related structures that we often talk about in research here. I've also gained a lot of skill in uh, the production of medical research, that being the submission, sorry, that being the submission process, that being the uh, actual gathering of data as well. And I've also gained a small amount of skill in the analysis of medical data and imaging. I can't say that I'll be reading an MRI uh, very soon, but I have learned how to at least look at a CT and know uh, if someone's disc has been replaced, if a vertebral body has been replaced, and those sorts of things. As for what's next, uh, I do not see an end to my relationship with SSF anytime soon. I, as I said previously, I've just come on to uh, help a little bit more in the lab, be more present in demos, and uh, also hopefully continue my research as long as I can. I intend to go to Yida Medical School, but as I know, uh, often you don't get your first choice for med school. So wherever my medical journey takes me, I'm very excited. Thank you. Thank you.
Platypus. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so, uh, the first of all, congratulations on your first big, big side score. That Thank you. The top 10 of general anniversary for last year. That's kind of cool. I saw that. Yeah. So, that's kind of a nice distinction. Um, what was your favorite project if you had to pick one? Hmm. Favorite project that I was involved with, I not, think would... Not the favorite attending, not the favorite fellow, <laughs> favorite project. I think it would still be site score. I was, even while we were beginning to work on that, I was sort of in, impressed with the uh, data that Jonathan was finding and the relationships we were able to draw. And I, I hope that scoring system can help a lot of surgeons in the future. Do you like practical work and working on cadavers? I, I love it. It's very enjoyable. 